Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just admiring this um, waste of space that you see in the background and perhaps a big eyesore in Chicago. Second, or maybe tied first, to um, the far northwest side. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, as you can see behind me, or technically right on the side of me, it's the Jane Byrne Interchange. It's um, one of the busiest intersections in the Chicago area. Maybe like just the city in general. And honestly, oh, voice crack. <laughs> I could care less talking about the history of this whole interchange in general because to be honest with you, it shouldn't exist to begin with. Like, why is this here? It's literally like a waste of space to say the least. I guess the only thing I could tell you right now is um, this. although this has been around like the mid 20th century when cars started becoming a thing or car infrastructure prioritizing cars started becoming a thing Yeah, expansion started in 2013 and it completed 2019 Oh wait, that's wrong? Oh, oh shit It was completed recently actually Never mind, completed recently Yeah, and that means there were a lot of delays and those delays were like about three years Yeah, three years late and I remember going on campus for the first time and I was like why is there like construction here yet there's nothing being done at the same time like it makes no fucking sense to me like what the fuck yeah but those delays would also like cause another fortune but you know what else would be a fortune a like and subscribe yeah <laughs> Yeah, although I know that he's the one that did not start this project altogether. However, he's like, he's literally capping with all these check marks on this fairy tweet. Like, check this shit out. Yeah, so recently the Jane Byrne interchange has been completed. And J.B. Pritzker put a few highlights in. It's the reduction of 5 million hours and 1.6 million gallons of petrol saved annually from drivers sitting in congested traffic. Uh, okay. A third reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Thousands of jobs created. Okay. New bike lanes, wider sidewalks, and improved access to transit. Where are the fucking bike lanes? Where are the wider sidewalks? I didn't know people walk with fucking wheels or and some shit. Is it gonna reduce traffic? Yeah, it will. But maybe only for like six months max. Six months max, it could be a lot shorter. But after that, Induced demand will take over because everyone's like, oh, new roads, let's t let's take it. I'll, I'd rather drive than take public transit. No. With this, yeah, you're not... It's gonna become slow again. That's all I'm trying to say. Damn, I can't speak. The second checkpoint, you already increased your carbon footprint building this whole thing to begin with. And especially the fact that more cars are gonna be on the road. All that gas that's coming out. Yeah, nah, like, that's cap, bro. Shut up. But yeah, not to mention, like, the wasteful concrete, too. That's, that you see all over the place. Like, there's no use except for rich people in their freaking vehicles. Third checkpoint. I mean, there's no way to prove it. All the way, there's no way not to prove it either. So, at least not that I have in mind yet, really. And last one. The last one made me laugh. More bike lanes, wider sidewalks. Bro, you literally just stamped a freaking interchange right in the middle of the fucking city. Where are you gonna fucking walk now? You expect divvies to be flying all over these highways? Alright, but to be real with y'all, literally the main reason to build this was to reduce traffic. Yeah. I swear, bro, just let me build one more lane. I swear we're gonna fix traffic. Just build, let's build one more lane. Just let me build one more lane. It's gonna fix traffic. It's gonna fix traffic. It's gonna fix traffic. I see on Google Maps, it turns out it hasn't really reduced traffic. It's pretty much the same, maybe even worse. Like, if you check this stat here, it's always red here. It's always red here during rush hour. But yeah, reduced traffic. That, we've been building, expanding highways for ever, forever, since the mid 20th century, and it just keeps getting worse. Look at the statistic here. Yeah, it's getting worse. It's not MLA sighted, but traffic's getting worse no, regardless where you go, because more, more people are going in cars more than ever. Yeah, and although we are not Los Angeles, like, come on. This is a transit friendly city, and you're putting a highway right next to here. You got the Clinton Blue Line all the way down there. You got several bus stops all the way, like, around the area. You got the UIC Halstead Blue Line. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, seriously, suburbanites gotta get with the times, too, really? But yeah, there's an argument that says, Well, it benefits suburbanites, huh? Alright, first off, highways shouldn't run through cities at all. They shouldn't. Like, we should treat our cities like Disney World, Disneyland. You can get around everywhere without a car. Like an amusement park, in a way. Like, honestly, though, I'm okay with the interstate system overall. But it shouldn't run through cities. It shouldn't. 
It should go around cities. I and speaking of it benefits suburbanites, in reality, no, it doesn't benefit suburbanites. Maybe it benefits them in terms of they want to be in a car more, but really no. This is like an example of poor induced demand, which is in short, like the more things are available, the more people will be using them. And is it good? Well, in short, no. Because when we start building highways, there starts to become more traffic. So they build more lanes and then more traffic again and then so on. But yeah, induced demand is pretty good but only if it's like something useful. It's something useful and doesn't take too much space. Like bikes, buses, trains, etc. But when you put cars, they, they're they very, very big, yet it can only fit little people. And yeah, it will, it will cause some problems, you know, to say the least. To add more context that cars really do take up a lot of space, this is the Eisenhower Expressway during rush hour. It may look like a lot of cars, but really, if you really think about it, once you get rid of the cars and keep the people, there's not a lot of people in there. And now this is a CTA train. There's 38 seats in there. About 60 people can fit there typically. And if you multiply it by eight, you can see that it can fit 480. Now that's a lot of people compared to like one whole swath of land that it takes up. Another thing that I want to talk about is that it was delayed. Not only it was delayed, of course, but there's barely any transparency throughout the whole project and how much it would really, really cost on your tax money. Yeah, not only was delayed approximately like four years, yeah, it really did add up. And what I mean by add up, April 2013, it was stated that it would be like $535 million. Overall, with this recent completion date, it's $806 million. Bro, like, what the fuck? That's like double amount, bro. Like, what the So you're telling me that the cost is based on the whole time that it's gonna take to complete? Instead of, like, the cost of the infrastructure itself? Bro, that's very, very fucking scam... scammy, to say the least. Like, all that money's probably gonna go to the politicians, some um, money to Cancun or whatever, I don't know. But honestly, though, it's funny how the Netherlands can convert a tunnel and a bridge for one whole weekend. But this would takes almost a fucking decade to complete. Like, yes, I know. This is bigger, which bit maybe bigger than it should really be, but it should really take only like, I don't even know five years at this point, bro, like seriously. Matter of fact, how long did it take to complete the 95th red line? Another side note is that people don't give a fuck how much car infrastructure costs at the end of the fucking day. But when it comes to like anything else, like bikes, trains, they fucking freak the fuck out. Like they start protesting and shit. It's gonna be a lot of more traffic, you know? <laughs> Like, bro, I don't really care how much it costs at the end of the day. Like, as long as it's more efficient, right? Like, what you see on the streets, on, the, on our highways at the end of the day, cars barely move like it's fucking M Mumbai, India. Yeah, I've heard from multiple sources already that it's already crumbling. It was even crumbling, like, during construction because it was taking that freaking long to build. Just like the red-purple bypass. Although, transit infrastructure, either way, lasts longer because it takes, like, less trains to pass through and it carries a lot more people compared to cars. Like, there's a bunch of two-ton machines passing through it to the point it's just gonna damage the road over the freaking years. But, like, like, seriously, like, the Forest Park branch hasn't had, like, a huge renovation since, like, the 1950s when it was first constructed, but yet it's carrying thousands of people daily. It's only a matter of time before it gets repaired again. Like, it's such a stupid investment that we keep building highways in such a dense city like this. One thing that infuriates me a bit is that people tend to look past the alternatives, like as if it doesn't exist or it's just a menace to society for some reason. And J. Robert Pritzker, stop capping, right? I know you didn't put this in motion, but stop capping with all those check marks. Like, what hallucinations did you take? What moon rocks did you smoke, to be exact? On your last checkpoint, where are the bike lanes? Where are, like, the new transit infrastructure that you're gonna create? This is not the fucking answer. And it has never been the answer since the 1950s. We need like a blue line express track. Maybe new lines. Maybe somewhere to cover between Lake Green Line and the O'Hare Blue Line. Because that gap is just way too freaking big. And speaking of which, I remember one time I read an article like two years ago, the end of 2021, that we were promised new bike lanes by the end of 2022. It's 2023 now. And there's no new bike lanes. At the very least, they haven't completed that project I meant. Because I have seen new protected bike lanes to be more specific. That's what I'm talking about. About. And also, what new jobs, now that you mentioned it, because I finally thought about it. What new jobs, what you could have built there were offices, buildings, residential places, etc. The only new job that you offered was construction. For building something fucking useless than toenail clippings.
yeah, in conclusion, our transit map could have looked like this, but instead we keep building highways. Like cities in general, at least North American cities should stop sucking suburbanites dicks, honestly. At least not in that way. Do not build Texas like car infrastructure here. This is literally like what you see behind me is literally Texas, but divided by four. If you multiply what you see right now by four, you got a typical Texan city for you. Like otherwise, make those like municipalities like build their own infrastructure, like seriously. It's kind of stupid how they get like easy access to the city, yet they don't get to freaking pay taxes like that. Like fuck off. We asked for a good transit system, right? But we didn't ask for this. Like what the fuck, dude? Fucking cancerous ass ad if I gotta be honest with you. Also, I like how this is a ploy to make it as if this is like a green option. No, it's not fucking green, dude. Car infrastructure in general has been like the epitome of like what's causing like climate change. And honestly, it's all over America, like especially like the Sun Belt states. It's not really transit down there and it's just getting hotter and hotter. I mean, I know there's no direct correlation like that, but and I know that the US doesn't have the biggest carbon footprint, like look at China for fuck's sake, but, but still. Like we repeat what doesn't work all the time. Just one more lane, bro. One more lane will fix it. Honestly, that one more lane bullshit doesn't fucking work. And even if it expanding lanes until there's no more traffic, on the highways at least, it's only gonna cause chaos on the on the side on the main streets in general. I feel like once climate change takes its peak, I guess, mo most people are gonna flock to the Midwest, but I don't want this place looking like Dubai on the freaking prairie. Like look at this. It look, like it's like a dense ass city, yet you see a big ass fucking highway running through it. Like what the fuck dude? Like yeah, like seriously, it, it has to stop. This here should be the last of it. Uh, honestly. But yeah, if you liked it. Go like it, and if you dislike it, like it anyway. Hit that red button, follow the Twitter, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.